All right, hello everybody. Top, welcome. For me, it's day four, not for you. Eh? So no excuses. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a project uh, that's called Tripping, which is this track. It's uh, one of the current releases that I did on Amada. And the track um, is actually from 2020, our most memorable year so far. And I received um, from a now a friend at that time, just an Instagram guy, um, like a message, we should talk, maybe do something together. Um, and at that time, this is one of the upsides of the situation we were in. We're doing Instagram lives, uh, talking with each other. He said, look, I have a vocal, record it. It's an old track, you might know it. We are kind of the same age. And um, I started working on it. And the project is this one you're looking at. It's an actual older version of Ableton. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's only this year that Armada uh, had been able to clear the sample of the vocal. Because I, I, we used um, a vocal from 20, no, I think like almost 20 years old, but it had to be resung. Even though being resung, you need to be cleared to be able to release it. So what happened is that this year they called me, they said, look, Maxime, we have great news. Finally, the track will be able to be released. I went back to this project and I said, shit, this is not sounding like it should sound in 2022. And that's what I'm talking about today, is of this project and then the project that I opened in May this year, leading to the release end of August. So I'm going to try not to go too much in detail into the production side because we only have one hour and I'm going to show both sides of the projects, being the fact that the first project which you hear now is me working around the loop, working around the vocal, trying to find a good hook. And then this year, after you know playing again in clubs, uh, being inspired by totally different music, and then applying that on the new version, and then being released. If at a certain point you have questions or something is not clear, just raise your hand. We have a microphone we can bring into you, and we can you know follow the steps. I'm a little bit nervous. It's not like Tomorrowland or anything like it. All right, so uh, what I'll do is I'll go through the project, show you what I have. I received from Armand, uh, Sylvain Armand, uh, I received uh, stems, which I call here SA parts, and it's really minimal. He sent me a bass, the vocal resung, of course, uh, the kick didn't use, lead intro snare rolls didn't use. So I always start like this, I receive the stems like this, checking them. And then I had to think, okay, he sent me the vocal, he sent me the bass. He was in Sweden at them, I was at home, and figure out what the plan is with the track. Second, most important of course, it's the vocal. Just can't seem to get my grip, baby. It's quite scary if you hear it like this because it's almost not correct. But this is the cool thing about it when you dive into the project then. And I'm going to go directly to the vocal. So you could immediately hear the difference of the vocal I received and how it's processed here. And I'm a big fan of the classic reverb of Ableton, which is sexy, simple, but it's really efficient. I always talk about it in the, the courses and the classes, is that I always use a return track to work with the reverb. I never put it on the track because and that way, you know, just like a mixer, when I'm DJing, I'm able to open the reverb whenever I want. And this is what you see here. 
with the parameters I opened it, you know, the vocal is almost completely dived into reverb. And then here I give it a little extra punch just when the break is coming. almost like I'm doing it while DJing, you know? This is the feeling. So this is the vocal part. I'm later going to jump to the second folder. If I do it now, it takes time, so I'm doing it later, but I'm telling you this now. What I did change this year is really important. The vocal was constantly the same. It was the same processing, just reverb, EQing on the vocal. You see, I almost nothing. It's just a little bit of EQ in the low, a little bit on top. Usually it's not necessary, but it's like, the thing I do, I always cut here a little bit just to be sure. Let's call it like a protection. Um, what I did in the second folder this year, I added um, Alter Boy, which is a really smart, easy to use plugin. It's idiot proof actually. You know, I just click on the presets, put it on top, and what happened is that you will hear it later. At a certain point, I kept the complete project the same, always with the same vocal like this. And at a certain point, I said, what if I switch the vocal during the song? Which is not done, but I couldn't care less. So I put Alter Boy on it at, I don't know, two minutes, and it changed the energy of the track. Eh? So this I will show later. Then I'm going to go to the bass line. Clearly, in this project, I didn't even work on the baseline yet. Because I think his baseline was hidden here. Yeah, you see, did nothing of processing. But again, what my task was at that time is just to create something with the vocal. Because he just said, look, we're not going to meet. It's just an idea, what do you think? Maybe we can do something. And I had to find my own interpretation of it. So at that time, the baseline is just a loop. And that's exactly what I did. I looped the whole thing like this. I cut it just at the time that I did the reverb on the vocal to create what I think at that time should be the break and then the drop. All the rest, I can go into details, but I won't just now, are just a lot of samples that you see that I used to create the structure, which helped me then realize the, the break and the drop. And one of the important thing is, I always use with the, the stab that I always use in my tracks, even though I know I'm going to replace it later, the stab is important just for me to remind at that time, we'll have a stab, and it will lead to a drop. I only recorded one thing external from a machine called Hydrasynth, which I just received at that time because it was, you know, with the whole shit situation at that time, a huge delay from, uh, you know, to get it into Europe. And I'm searching for it, just a minute here, the Hydrasynth it's called. So I used the Hydrasynth, to pump the volume a bit to create tension i call it tension because what you need in a break is not a lot of noise or a lot of stuff that takes away the attention it's just one item that triggers in your mind the idea that something is building up and see how low it is i put it on mi minus 15. it's shocking you almost don't hear it but it is there it's triggering the brain like there's a build-up coming up and what you will hear is that this will fade away, you see it here, and then it will lead to what could be the drop, you know. Again, in this demo version for myself in 2020, I waited a long time. Simulating only a kick, doesn't matter. This is my tip and advice to you. Work on the structure, keep your structure clear. And don't get caught up in like, oh, I need this sound now, I need the drop sound now, or a clap. It's really not important. You can add all those things later. You can, even if you forget it, you can listen to another track from a super cool guy and say, okay, I'm going to 
copy everything he does, but first have your own structure. This is what I did here. So I recorded from the Hydra synth this one, which is just, I'm not, I don't play key, so I just put one key, put a lot of reverb on it, but I knew this had to be this length to go into the drop. But the cool thing I re recorded on the Hydra synth is the other sound that created, that made sure that the track was different from other tracks. And this is a cool thing. I did it in 2020. And the, so the sound, the still today, this sound is unheard of. Because you, one, you need the Hydra synth, and two, if you don't write down the parameters on your Hydra synth, you have a problem because once you change the parameters, it's gone. So let me just find the other Hydra synth. Is it this one? It's this one. So this is the recording that I did, which is really an abstract sound, knowing that I had the bass line from Sylvain and the vocal. So the only thing I did is actually put a kick on it, on this bass line, and I said, okay, what can I do to make it different without the vocal and everything, is make sure that I have a sound that nobody else has. I'm a fan of splice, I'm a fan of samples. I, I love samples, I'm sampling everything. But at that time, it's really important to add one ingredient that says, go and match this. Motherfucker, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but this is actually cool, because this sound is really weird, and I have no idea if it's even in the right key. So this is what I recorded. I tweaked it with some knobs, cut off, whatever, but sick load of reverb on it. And then you will see here, just in Ableton, super easy, doubling it. You see how sloppy I work. It's just not even matching. If you look at this, it's not correct. But this is the cool thing. When it goes over into the next one, it creates this ID in the mind. And again, reverb, reverb, reverb. But reverb is only allowed here if you don't do reverb on the bass line, on the kick, and all these other things, because then you have the attention full thing. So this would sound a little bit like this. Again, just bass, and then leading the attention completely away from the first idea. And then, again, cool thing in Ableton, I just take this one, put it here, click right mouse if he wants to know, whoa, calm. And then you can do reverse clip, super easy trick, don't have to do anything for it. And then I reversed it to announce, you know, when I bring in the hi-hats or other things. And then I'm gone. And this gives me time, again, I'm sure most of you now like, oh yeah, there was a vocal. The vocal, I can throw it in back now. Otherwise, I would have been stuck on the drop with the vocal. I'm like, shit, I'm crazy. On the, on the drop, but I said, no, let's do it the other way around. On the drop, do something completely different that only comes in once. And then you can throw in the vocal again at that time. Up, and here it is. And now we restart. So actually what I do for myself, I buy myself some time in the track. And not every track has to be like Pachanga Boys, 15 minutes, but it's cool to have a longer track because I always start like this with the basic of the track should be long, like uh, it's called today an extended version. Yeah. Ah, the noise, sorry. No, I can't. <laughs> no, I can't, sorry. It's just in it. It's a bad, a bad note for Armada. Um, but I can, I can mute and then when I play, I can play. Um, where was I? Uh, where was I? The drop, the vocal. Yeah, so I'm buying myself some time and it, they call it an extended version now because afterwards, especially for Spotify, it's important to have short versions. But I tend to create a long and, in my mind, normal structure 
so that afterwards it's easy to cut in it and to find like this is a good intro, outro, mid part, whatever. My experience is if I do it the other way around and I start with a short version, then my head is really exploding to create a long version because then you create a boring intro, a boring ending, and because uh, it sounds like you needed this. Here it's different. And my point is when I drop the sound here, This gives me clearly, you can see it, almost 30 seconds, maybe 40 seconds in a track. If you delete this, it's killing. It's just a drop with a bass, nothing is happening. And then I probably should have the vocal on it, because you will hear the difference now. The first eight bars are cool, okay. And then you're in a club, and there's nothing. But if you hit this, just takes the attention completely away. So regardless of taste or hype or whatever, this sound makes sure that the track is completely different. What I'll do next is do a quick jump to the other folder. Oh my god, this is small. All right. And so just Quick fun fact is the, that uh, so this one is created 26th of May 2020. Quite shocking, actually. And so this one, <laughs> almost two years later, also in May. So what happened is I was in Ibiza. I played a show in Bora Bora, and I was. Uh, playing back to back with a lot of artists and most of the artists like in Ibiza like uh, And I'm not saying it is in a bad way, but that's how it is. They like tech house and I'm I like tech house But I don't actually play it, but one of the tracks being played that day Really kicked my ass. I put it here as inspo. This will be really weird Because this track has nothing to do with me or my genre But this track was played, I think, three times that night because we had a 17-hour set and the dance floor just... the energy was insane. Every part I go to, it's the same. This is one of the only aspects about Tech House that for me is a bit less, but I'm not judging, this is just for everybody. But this track is insanely good. So if you see here, it's called V4 Ibiza Inspo. So the day after on the plane, I said, yo, if, uh, to myself, I said, if I have to make this work, this track with Sylvain has to have a 2022 sound and not, oh yes, I made it during COVID and I'm sad it doesn't work. No, this is bullshit. So this is what happens. I took the folder that you just saw. I changed nothing, but I will show you the thing about the vocal. But what I did is I went to search for samples that made me think about this Tech House track. Because what happens in those tracks is there's not a lot of breaks. And yeah, I'm the break master. And sometimes not in a good way because people want to party. And especially two years later, the dance floor vibe changed. This is just a fact. And I saw it with my own eyes during all those back-to-backs. It's like, yeah, I have to, I have to you know, pimp my game because otherwise I'm not making it this summer. And I had Tomorrowland ahead of me, everything, and I said, okay, this is really a challenge. So I called it the Ibiza edit just for myself. The track wasn't called afterwards like this. And one of the first thing I did that you can see here, oh, it's called Snare Roll. It's a sample from Claude von Stroke, and it's constantly a snare roll. It changes a little bit in the wave file. You could see it goes up and down, up and down, which I really like. It sounds like this. Anyway. Uh, so it sounds like this, constantly looping. This is the 
чего лица вот всего. Just need the charger, it's in days even. So. Yeah. Whoa. Look how professional we are. Alright, what's this with the net? So it's a switch to sound check then? Yeah, I wouldn't open up music. Yeah, it's true, true. All right. All right, uh, so far for the intermission. Um, so the snare roll, which is actually like this, uh, so forget the noise on the background, it's just a constant loop. So with the Tech House track in mind, I said, okay, what do I need for myself? I was talking to myself, I said, what is in this other track? It's the constant vibe, the constant groove and this is the cool thing about house and tech house and all those things in Ibiza is it's the continuous vibe and I was watching the DJs play and I was I was actually doing a back to back with Sairita and she's doing you know Circo Loco and all those gigs and I was really like looking like shit this is a this is a jam and uh, here I am with all my breaks and especially at that time you know for me the world just opened up you know even though we played in 2021 already some shows the game was really starting, Ibiza was just opening up and all those guys had those en this intense energy. So I said, you know, after the call that we received to release the track, I said, this has to have, I need to keep the break, I need to have the drop with the weird sound, but in the meantime, I have to build a bridge for myself. So this is the first element that I used. At that time, you see zero processing, couldn't care less. And then I went into a clap game on top of it. And then I'm going to loop this just for now. Oh, little loop. So you can immediately hear where I'm going based on this other track. This is something that is really, it's so easy to do. It's three elements, but they're working against each other. And the loop on the, on the low, this drum, which is really like, again, how low is it? Minus 10 against the rest. It's really shuffling, which makes it interesting. And if I put the vocal now, you will hear it. Oh, shit, again. and immediately becomes a different track already. But I had to make it work in my own track because this is also what Armada wants because that's why I work with them is I have my own sound. But I said, look, I'm going to pimp the sound. So we make sure to have the 2022 sound. Also thinking about if the track becomes really good for the audience, it might even be played until the summer of 23. Who knows? Um, so now I'm going to show you the build-up that I did with those samples. And I'm going to show you, as promised, about the vocal change. Vocal still the same sample, still the same processing. You see here um, with the reverb on the break. You hear this on the kick, it changes everything. Now the snare roll, downstairs. Triggers the mind like, whoa, okay, something big is going to happen. And this is what I want to simulate. And I was literally thinking about myself being in Digiboot with those guys and in my mind, like, I know what's coming, watch this. But to be honest, the previous track version, I didn't play that day because I didn't have the impact. I'm going to jump to the vocal, just a quick jump. What I did here, a lot more editing than in the previous version. Again, two years later, learned some things. And the alter boy is this bad boy. And if you go to the presets, super easy, you change from preset one to three, you don't even have to do anything. You go to rich fifth in this case. This adds the illusion that there are two singers, for example, which is absolutely not true. It's just a recording, but 
if I'm not mistaken, I will see where I added it. Uh, mixer new device on. Look, this is the clear thing that I did for myself. In the whole track, which this is the whole track, it's like what one tenth of the whole track. I used this one. You could ask yourself, what is the meaning of this? But this is the vocal originally. And watch when it turns on, how it changes. So it colors the vocal like it has an extra punch, like somebody is pushing it from the background. And where do I put it? With the fucking snare roll. And everything else that is building up. So again, we start here with this little thing that everybody can find it's so easy it's just a sample but it's on the kick and it's actually telling a story and it introduces like this the snare roll coming up and the snare roll introduces the clap and the clap introduces the new vocal and that's why i work in chapters but this is only possible with the structure of 2020 because at that time i built the structure like this with a clear rig and this is something that really needs to be followed in my mind so that if I would have a short version and I wouldn't have a drop or a break, I wouldn't have the Hydra synth, then this 2022 version wouldn't be possible. And this is the absolute truth, because at that time, I created for myself a structure that is not changeable. Because I know that when I do the drop like this, it will work. Because I'm a DJ and I play on the dance floor. And I'm a dance on the dance floor, I pay attention to the people and I pay attention to the back-to-backs I do. Because otherwise, you're just a fool not looking at those guys. And this is the whole point that Tech House, which is not my genre, is inspiring me anyway and makes the track better. And we had a kick ass release. I'm going to push a little bit on the volume of the vocal to make it extreme so that you hear it. I will exaggerate a little bit on the Alter Boy so that you hear the difference, but it is really there. And I heard just before me talking about distortion, it is a kind of a distortion, this one. And during the break, it makes sure that, you know, you could work with filters, with reverb, with whatever drum rolls nowadays on, on a DJ setup. And this is the job being done just before. This is too much. But this color is needed to simulate a real break. This is the next point I'm making. So you have the kick that in the previous folder was gone for, I would say, at least a minute, maybe a minute and a half. At that time, I said, wow, long break, tail of verse in mind, amazing. But now, being in the DJ boot, I said, okay, I need to get a kick back in the game because the consistency of the kick is important. People who are on the dance floor for many hours doing whatever they want to do, at that time, as soon as you cut away the bass and you cut away the noise, it's an interruption, especially in the beats at daytime, long back-to-backs. And this is what I was noticing with the other DJs, like, damn, those tracks are really interesting, actually. And I didn't go back to Tech House since I don't know, 10 years. And now I was analyzing Tech House to add, like they were just saying before me, like pepper and salt, new ingredients. So the kick, instead of having it, no, this is not the kick, my God. Uh, the kick is here. Eh? Instead of having it gone already here, for example, I said, no, the kick should be gone just for a few moments. And normally I do always on the kick, uh, is it this one or this one, or is it on the group? I don't know. Ah, EQ, no, not this one. No, not this one. Doesn't matter. What I always do is I cut out the low on the kick, just like you can do on the filter here, on the on the DGM. And you build towards this break, and you keep the kick as long as possible. And this is something, since this project, I do it on every track. Every guy I work with, 
I say, let's try and keep the kick as long as possible to keep the flow going. It might change next year or the year after, but this is the trend now. And in the meantime, the drum rolls are doing their job, the vocal is doing its job, and as you see here, lead intro still has to start. So I have everything going on, and for me. And you hear the vocal giving this energy to the track, super important. Knowing that the drop still has to come. I added new risers. Changed the vocal just before the drop. And now the hydrocent. So this changes the track completely because knowing this as a DJ, you can really build up your set and say, let's wait and see, I have something for you. And you build, you build, you build. And just at the right time, the whole track is being elevated by a few elements that actually are just samples. But again, the basis of the track was super important. The basis of the track was the structure, having the hydrocin do its job, and of course, having the vocal. What happens with the vocal in the previous is that the sample that you see here, this one, it's not a sample, it's a, it's a real vocal being sung by our friend, I cut a new piece and I said, again, listening to other tracks, I'm going to show you what I mean in the other track. Uh, here. The vocal. This triggered my mind constantly. Arena, arena. People were freaking out. I said, what is this? And it's just like, eh, nah, nah, eh, nah, nah, constantly. So I said, I looked at the, 2020, at the 2020 project and I said, whoa, the vocal is not in the break at a certain point. It's just noise and build up. So what did I do? You can clearly see here, I cut a piece from further in the track and I said, there are no rules because it's my track. So I said, what if I take the vocal and I put it just before the drop to give an extra push? with the elements. And this is the real announcement. And it is like this now in the, in the original release. And this is actually based on the Tech House track that I just showed, like this constant, na -na -na, na -na -na, constantly in it, in your mind, because then you go home like, what is this track? Oh, I can stop singing it. And this is what I was missing. So actually I was really happy that the track wasn't cleared for so long, because otherwise we wouldn't be sitting here and looking at this project that has become a better version of itself. So maybe if somebody has already a question, we can listen to that. Yeah, so I have a question about uh, the build-up. So how to make a build-up more uh, effective and more, more powerful for uh, a song? Because, for example, on my tracks, uh, I try to do a build-up, but I see that sometimes me it's, um, it's missing something <coughs> to make more powerful and then to arrive to hit the drop uh, in a certain way. Well, it's a... It's a because I see the elements that yeah. uh, you you choose are few but impressive and impressive. Like yeah, but this is this is completely correct what you're saying. Thank you. It, sh it should be um, the elements you choose should have an impact. Uh, you can choose. I used to do it back in the day. I made a lot of shitty tracks as well, and I was adding like layers of shakers and layers of hi hats, and I said, yeah, I need one more because it's not en it's not enough and. You know, I told this story a couple of times. Uh, there was this guy uh, running a label called Noir, and I sent music, and he said, yeah, it's a good idea, Maxime, the sound is really shit. And the track was never released, luckily. And the reason was, I only figured out later, is that I was putting layers and layers and layers, and I said, yeah, one more, one more, one more, and it's never enough. And at the end, you look at your full, and like, I don't even know where to begin anymore. So that's why, to come back to your question, what is super important is to really strip down the elements and say, okay, what do I really need? The basis really for the whole thing here 
is this snare roll. This is the basis for the whole buildup. And it's actually something that just, you cannot, if I would do like this, super loud against the rest, it would dominate the vocal, it would dominate everything. So the element of surprise is just, like, is there a snare roll or what am I actually hearing? I have no idea. And it makes you want to go back to the moment. And then what you see clearly in my project, and it's a lot of projects like this, is that I cut the samples on the right time. Meaning, I work in chapters. And this is this one starts here, then this one starts here, then this one starts here. You see what I mean? And if I would put everything together all the time, then for the ear, for the people dancing, it's always the same. It's if the snare roll, the clap, and everything is constantly like this. A certain, do this for one minute, and it will be like one sound. But of course, if you split it up, and you have, you know, do it fast. First this one, and then the clap comes in. It's like you're like, okay, this is really interesting. So it's nothing special, it's just placing the elements. And to go back to my story with Noir, at that time, the track was full. It's all the samples beneath each other, not leading to anything, just being layered. Me thinking, oh, this is the best drop ever because it's powerful, but it isn't. You need space in those things. And this is how, in this case, the build-up makes the difference. Because if you see here, and the whole part here, all those elements are not there. And we are only doing this around two minutes, three minutes. In the actual song, I think it's further. But the energy is being built up. So in the beginning, I give the complete attention to the vocal. Crazy. And this is important. Because I want the people to know this is a remake of an old track. We worked on the vocal, we have our own singer. And then I start building up the elements. Uh, this was replaced later. It doesn't do anything, but it's somewhere. I don't even know. So you have the stab coming in. But the important thing is what is following afterwards, all the little percussion doing things. And now this little hi-hat becomes important. It's just a little hi-hat, but now... And, again, a little trick on the vocal like I just showed. When the altar boy... This is important. Because you think in your mind, it's actually something changing. It's a trick on your mind. But it will not help if I start doing and risers and claps and everything because it's too much. It needs to be subtle. Because again, if you put the volume up, then you will really hear like, it's already a lot. But if it's full, you can't handle it. And DJs won't play it. And this is the trick that I heard in those tracks of Tech House. Some of them, the good ones, are all also subtle. I always thought, oh, it's full of shit, it's bam, bam, bam in your face, but it's not like this. It was a lot of space, and the little vocal, da -na -na, da -na -na, was really stuck in my mind, bringing me to this concept of this track, actually. Uh, I made a note that I wanted to say something uh, oh, yeah, important. So in the first version in 2022, no, 2020, in the first version, I had um, two cool samples in my mind. I think it's this one, yeah. Which reminded me actually of uh, Jean-Michel Jarre back in the 80s. Might be his actually. Yeah, and this is coming here at the end of the track. On the way back, I said, no way, this has to be early. Why would I wait until five minutes to put this amazing thing? So this wasn't like this in the previous drop because you heard it. So I put it here to create the right impact. So I took everything away, the bass, changed the vocal, put the vocal just before the drop, and then put this impact here. And the claps make sense now. Up oh, and now the hydra set in your face. So I changed 
my own structure based on two years of difference and listening to other people. I grew because time went by, I was working in the studio, almost forgot about the track, and when I was playing with other people, I said, okay, this is interesting, what can I learn from this, even if it's not my genre? And people are way too stuck in whatever thing they are, and it's by opening up like this that you can really pimp your track. And this is the actual proof. This is called the Ibiza version because I went there, I was impressed, I was even shocked, like, hmm, I'm, I felt a little bit like left behind. And then I looked at my project, and just look at this sample here, and I said, what is this doing in the back? It makes no sense. It's really cool, it's beautiful, wow, good production, but who cares, it should be here when you drop. Now it really makes sense, brings the track to another level. And we are talking about only one element. And this one still remains, making my point earlier that if you have one element that makes the difference, you win. Easy. All the rest can be used, reused, be the same. But if you put one element of surprise, being this one, I play it now and I see other DJs playing it and this is the part I'm most proud of. But I can only do it when I start with this structure that is so important, knowing that I leave everything at its place. If I would have a short break, if I wouldn't know how the drop would be, then this has no use. Imagine I place this in the beginning of the track. You lose every element of surprise. But if you put everything together with all the little elements I add, and this, this new build-up here. And I'm pretty sure you didn't even notice this one until now, because it's super low, but if you combine it with this, it's almost the same. But my point is, this one was already in it, this one is being highlighted just before the drop. The vocal that I replaced, where is it? Here is also a new element, and then, of course, on the drop, this sample that I had, putting it just where it should be. And then the later version, the one that's being mixed and then mastered, the clap loop is also gone. But at that time, I didn't know. No. Now it sounds dry, but it actually works on the dance floor. If you take the new version, the clap is gone, but we made the bass completely powerful. So what I did is actually work with somebody else to pimp the bass line. Because this is something I couldn't do on my own, but I knew that the bass line didn't have enough impact. So there was processing on the bass line, which is definitely for another chapter, but it was pimped uh, with a lot of noise and disruption, uh, distortion and everything, so that at the drop I could lose the claps. Because if I have the claps running, I return into my old pattern of constantly using the same things. So going out of the project and going back in was actually the best thing for this track, to be honest. I was I was really frustrated in the beginning because you know no it's not cleared we'll not be able to release it then the the stupid the stupid suggestion came out oh, maybe uh, give it for free as I, I said it huh, by the way <laughs> and then uh, the label said no way and look almost two years later we came here and the track was completely pimped due to experience with other people another question from anybody. That's a pretty good question. I would give myself a lot of points, uh, but one of them is, is, is actually in this project. I think at that, at that time I wanted to rush things. I wasn't satisfied fast. Like, why is this not working? And I was talking to the, the, the guys from Ableton earlier today. That Ableton, for me, enabled a way to find my own structure. 
you know, if you look at uh, certified trainers who really know and thrive with Ableton, I'm just a DJ using this to create my ID, nothing more. But Ableton enables me to say, oh, if I want this here and it, it's possible. I don't even, it doesn't matter. So what I would say to myself like a couple of years ago, like take the time to discover which way works for you. And this is important because some guy might tell you like, ah, this is, this is how we should work and this is the best workflow and uh, you shouldn't do this and do that, but you never have to listen. Because in those programs, it's about letting your creativity go. And what I didn't know back then is that by using less samples, I could achieve more. So, you know, here 30 tracks seem a lot, but there's a lot of doubles, there's a lot of things that are muted, that are not, so I think you can delete 10 and it's only 20 tracks and sometimes one sample is a track I have two vocal tracks so it's not a lot and this is one of the best things to do I think is to build your structure first like this zoom out look at the structure and the structure starts above with the whole kick baseline thing if you see it's it's just this is the big chapter this is the big overview with a couple of chapters and this is how I always do it then you can literally look down and see, you know, it's, it's, it's just there. I'm not inventing anything. This is actually what the track is built around, is this chapter. And all the rest is just leading up to this, and the vocal is being used to carry it. That's all. That's, the vocal is just there to get the attention away, and then the other elements come in. It's a really long explanation, but I think you get my point. Yes. Yeah, always, always, always. Well, and in this case, I started with the drums being the bass line again. I'm going to show you again how it was. So this is literally the sample I received. Uh, samples, yeah. So this is literally what I got. This is what I received, so I said, okay, first of all, I have to work with this. So the first thing I do is put a kick on it to see how that sounds. And it's literally this, uh, so wait. Kick, where is my bass line? This was literally the first step. For, because imagine I do this and I don't like it, then I have to tell Sylvain, like, I don't think this will work easy because this is what he gave me so if I do this and I check out the vocal and make a loop out of it Crazy. then I was like okay this is really cool actually I just put the bass the kick a random kick and then reverb on the vocal and for me this was the proof that this is a good idea this works just like it. But of course, that being said, you need more than just a loop. And then I was looking like, okay, I know what I like. I like a clap game. I like some hi-hats. My, my trick is always the step. Dun, 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 dun. Even though I replace it afterwards, because you know, you cannot do this the whole time. I was looking for the extra sound and this is one of the first elements that I added. Which is filling up the whole space. And as soon as I had this, I said, okay, I need everything else to build up towards that moment. Because this is key. Because imagine you loop this and then you hate it after five seconds. This is a promise. is cool one time and this is actually inspired on you know 2020 when the melodic was really building up and the guys were really like conquering the world I said yo now I have my own stuff but I had to wait two years to release it so the proof is when I opened the project I said this still sounds good then I know that this is the special part and I like to highlight this just once and then the, for myself the biggest trick is, is that I reversed it 
it's like one click, it's nothing. But this is for me the biggest trick. Then I highlight the vocal again. Crazy. And then I go to the outro. So to summarize how this track was starting out was of course the bass line, me adding a kick, finding the elements that makes Maximani the step, blah blah blah. And then one element of surprise. But I didn't know at that time I would change the project completely based on a totally different genre. But I'm really happy I did because now almost every track is being built like this now that I make with all the elements of surprise and the kick being played as long as possible even if it's in a low cut so you only have tick 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 at the end so that when you're playing you can really keep the attention super high because the competition is killing in a good way but it is and if other people are coming up with new ideas and I'm left behind with way too much break and pause, I'm not going to be booked again. This is the reality. Somebody else? Are we almost at the end? Whoa, one hour. Yes. Yeah, Good idea, good idea, good idea. Yeah, the, so the, the question is like, what is the DJ side of things about this? Um, this is the whole basis of um, of this track, is that um, I was booked to play at Bora Bora, which is now closed, and so they did like a, a surreal marathon. I think I was there for 15 hours behind the booth, and every time somebody else came to play, I played with Eli and Fur, I played with Andre Oliva, with all those guys, with every single person, had nothing to do with my sound. So I was really challenged. So of course I have my tracks, I have my records, but if I would do like, oh, Renaissance and this and that, yeah, they would kick me out of the boot immediately. So I adapted myself, I adapted the sound and the vibe to the people playing. So I was really looking like, okay, what is she playing? Oh, okay, ooh, challenge. And then I was looking and then I found some classics that I knew that when I would play it in Bora Bora at that time, people would be happy. And then the person next to me was surprised, like, oh, we go in this direction, all right. And then the challenge began. And I don't know what happened, but I was on fire that day. And I said, okay, I'll keep playing, is that okay? And then they said, yeah, somebody else just arrived from an after party, she wants to play now. And then we moved the party from outside, inside, and we went for hours, but completely out of my comfort zone. So I really had to search in my folder for different tracks that usually I don't play. So I went, one, to classics, or forgotten classics, and two, most important, to tracks that usually don't make it into my sets. Because, you know, I have to be realistic, I bring a sound, and I have to honor that sound. But at that time, when you play for five, six, and more hours, you can really take a journey and take some risks. And I've, I've changed after that, I literally changed. I, sometimes, you know, when I'm the, the possibility, I, I play different genres. Not too much, of course, not on the, the main stage or stuff like that, but on different bases. But this is also important when you're being challenged. My advice would be like, accept the challenge and see how far it goes. Because then you get in the studio or somewhere else and you're, you're like, yeah, I should do this. Again, if I take this one track, I hardly, I, I think I played it two times this summer because it's, it's, it's I can't play it, but it's so good. It's, you, it's, you can, if you think about it, there's something in it that blows your mind. And I saw this energy on the dance floor and I said, this is what I need in my tracks. So I called Armada, went back with the team and I said, I'm going to change the track completely. It's not changed completely, it's just pimped, but in a good way. And it is 100% to thank about the, the DJ experience. It's one on one together. But you have to be open for it. Again, maybe 10 years ago, when I talked to myself, the other question, maybe I wouldn't be open to it. I would say, oh, tech house. But now, the guys are dominating. There are the parties of ants and all those big things. I said, yeah, if I want to make it to that lineup, maybe I should be more open-minded. 
Do we have time for one more question, or is it finished? Yeah. One more final question. Yes. I understand what you're saying, and splice is a big discussion nowadays, eh, because a lot of people... Uh, I understand. Well, the inspiration part of splice works like this for me, is this is my rule for myself to protect myself, not to work with only splice, because this is the big danger. With splice, it's the, one of the best inventions ever. It's like Shazam, it's like, it's, it's, it's a gift, but it's really dangerous. When you start with splice, first, then your track will be built on splice. So here, for example, I think if there is splice, it's maybe one or two things, but you will never notice them because it's, I've told, baseline, kick, vocal, hydrocent, after it beats the, the drum rolls, and then I said, okay, maybe I need like, I call it um, a transition, like something that comes up and leads over the thing. This I will look for splice. And sometimes it happens, inspiration-wise, that I hear by accident, you know, if you type in clap and there is a vocal in it, it also happens. I say, wow, this is a good vocal. Maybe I should look this kind of vocal. This is something I do. And if I see that the sample that I had in mind is not being used for over a year in Spice, then I, then I take it. Because it happens a lot that you hear three different tracks in Beatport and it's all with the same sample. Yeah. It, it, it's possible to be inspired, but you have to watch out again. My, my advice would be start with as many as ingredients from your own or use stems or even stems from Ableton first. And whatever is missing, like this little thing, this you get on Splice. So it's not built on Splice because this is dangerous. And we are also in a brutal world out there. And if somebody finds out, it's like, ooh, it's fake, it's on Splice, which is bullshit, but you have to watch out so, because the Splice police is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. one last one. Question? Yes. If I play a two hour set, um, I learned from playing at the radio a while back that I could fit and really squeeze 15 tracks in one hour. I wouldn't recommend that in a set, but sometimes it happens that I have tracks that I'm testing that are not finished, that I fit them all together. So in theory, when I go to a set, I need at least six, uh, 30 tracks for two hours. But what I do is I take at least 40 or 50 tracks with me in this folder. You know, if I have like a minute, I can show you in my record box. You can see it directly. But what I usually do, I take a second folder. It happened on the main stage of Tomorrowland. I had 15 tracks prepared. I even mixed the complete set before to be 100% sure eh, you know, it was the main stage. But then the crazy thing happened. They came to me and I said, oh, the next DJ is not on time. It's not a joke. Never knew this was possible. Uh, but the person didn't make it on time. So what happened is I made a folder. You see, I have all my folders here. And I had the, the main stage folder, and then I had extra. I was dreaming with myself, so you never know, I can play longer. The, the big boss comes to play longer. But it happened. So I had a folder, extra, and I was super relaxed. And the two tracks I played extra, I was just actually looking at the people, enjoying myself, because I knew it was a gift. So I would say if you go for a two-hour set, make sure that the basis, uh, for example, uh, here you see the structure of my, uh, let's say the first half hour is completely defined with an intro, with a start, with some IDs, and then here at the end it's extra. So I know if I'm through the first part, then I can start choosing. And then I go back to your question, when I'm DJing like a long set and somebody challenges me, or the situation is challenged, like, I can because I'm prepared in a way. And I throw in, at the end especially, I throw in some different styles forgotten tracks. And then when I'm going to a set, I'm always a little bit nervous. It's still the game, but I'm never surprised like, oh, what happened? Give it up for <laughs>